Now the devil doesn't come after your pastor because he wants his soul in hell. The devil comes after your pastor because he wants you in hell. I, I met a young man, he said he's not going to church again. I said, why? Well, he said, my pastor's girlfriend is in my street. You see, the devil did not give your pastor a girlfriend because he wants your pastor in hell. He gave your pastor a girlfriend because he wanted to authenticate fornication in your life. So he needed to use the one God has sent to teach you the word to redefine what life is and what sex should be. Now anytime a man picks up the gospel and decides to become a tool in the hand of God, he becomes a target. A target for the devil. Until you begin to appear in the radar of the devil because you are causing problems in the kingdom of darkness. The devil doesn't come after you. Jesus said, Peter, the devil planned to sift you as wheat. But I've prayed for you. Why Peter? The moment Jesus said, Peter, on this rock, I'll build my church. Peter became the target. It was the prayer of Jesus that saved Peter. Strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. We are going to hear stories of ministers of God falling. Wonder, wow, can a man of God do this? Anytime you say your pastor, you should know that he's a target. He's a prime target. Are you seeing it now? Those that are the targets of the devil would need the most prayers in these last days. Bring down a man that is leading a hundred thousand persons and guess what? You've brought down 80,000 of those persons. He cast a bridge to Sarkozy. Little Sefetin Alokashata. Paul said, Timothy, you will contend for the faith that was once delivered to the brethren. You know the meaning of contend? He said, Timothy, you will fight for the faith that was once delivered to the brethren. Now I put it to you. It is your duty to contend for the faith that has been delivered to those that God has laid his word in their mouth. You will not sit back and fold your hands. And pick up your phone and comment on any post on the internet that is against or targeted against pastors or preachers. You will say, Lord, no, not in my time. God said, Damas has forsaken me. I haven't loved this present world. Damas was a worker with Paul. He was more like an evangelist. He was, I, I would call Damas an apostle. If he was so close to Paul and he traveled with Paul, that means he had every, he was doing everything Paul was doing. But Damas saw the word and loved the word. Damas had forsaken me. I haven't loved this present world. Everyone that preaches the gospel has the tendency to fall. The Bible says the righteous man falleth seven times. Not the sinners. The sinner is already down. The righteous man falleth seven times. The righteous man falleth seven times. He says in the last days if the righteous are scarcely saved. Now what is our means of escape? is when the saints begin to pray for themselves is when christians believers begin to pray for one another in one accord in one accord we will begin to show love are you seeing it now he says a brother is born for the day of adversity as christians as believers as brethren it's not enough to just condemn the acts but are you passionate enough to pray to pray for that preacher to pray for that singer to pray for that choir master, to pray for that brother. Now you see, in those days when soldiers fight with the sword and the shield, they set themselves in battle array. The soldier on the right uses his shield to protect the soldier on the left from his shoulder to his knee. The other guy does same, protects the next man. So they move in one accord. So it's difficult to penetrate into that bonding. Because every soldier watches the back of the next soldier. Are you seeing it now? The Bible says, iron sharpened iron. As we begin to pray for ourselves, you see, we weaken the authority of the devil on the face of the earth. Strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. 